two, one. And my foot is just like dangling. Oh, this you crazy mother. Yo! Hey, lady! You don't have OCD. You forgot your spaghetti! You have OCD. Okay, thank you. I didn't know my psychiatrist was on here. I'm Ashley Darby. That should be my middle name. Amberlynn Hungry Reed. I don't know, I just feel so disconnected. She was like, you're healthy. But you are obese. Hello? Is anyone high? Hey girls, welcome back. Recently, there was a two-part series made about your girl Amber, painting her as the victim of harassment and bullying, but also painting the reaction channels as fat phobic haters. Now if you know Amber, you know none of these things are true. If you're new here, this first example is probably one of the worst ALR moments in the Amberverse. And if you've been here for a while, you may be all too familiar with these clips. Becky is Amber's ex. In 2019 Becky's mom Norma was diagnosed with cancer. Amber and Becky made a video asking the haters to quote watch as many ads as you can and to also donate to a GoFundMe that was started for Norma. Hi guys, so I just wanted to start this video by saying there will be ads in this video because I want to donate all the proceeds every single last penny that I make on this video towards Becky's mom. So we're so, going to explain everything and kind of talk about Becky's mom's journey with breast cancer. So the GoFundMe is going to be down below and we're going to talk more about that. Um, just please you guys listen to this whole video and watch as many ads as you can so we can donate as much as we can to her mom. When it came back that it was cancer, that really gave all of us a reality check because we always thought you know this would never be us you know there is a strong um cancer presence on both sides of my family and um we just never thought it would be our mother i'm trying to have faith that they'll remove it all but you never know and the proceeds from this video all of all of whatever we make off this video is gonna go straight to my mother. So we're just trying to rack up as much money and I've already, you know, given them money off of the GoFundMe to help. People were skeptical and there were theories it may be a scam. Becky's mom, Norma and Amber did not get along. One day they were arguing via voice notes and Amber's voice notes were leaked. This is what she had to say to Becky's sick mother. I have left comments on your Facebook regarding your cancer. I have asked how you're doing. I have been there in that sense. And, you know, we don't have to really go down the line of, oh, you didn't message me, you didn't message me, because I can say the same about you, where not once have you thanked me personally for the money I was going to give you, for the video I made, you heard for the backlash I'm getting, you. for sticking up for you. Not once did you say sorry for any of the things that you have brought to my channel that is in a negative light. I am not trying to argue with you. That is the last thing I wanna do since you just got out of surgery. I don't want to cause any more stress onto you, onto Becky, onto anyone in your family, onto myself, because that's just not going to fix anything. I am just tired of the added drama onto my YouTube. I'm tired of not being appreciated when I try to help you the best that I can. You heard that right, Amber never gave the money she made from that video to Norma. And the video was ultimately deleted for breaking terms of service. Unfortunately, Norma passed away. Amber never attended Norma's funeral and this was her behavior on the day she and Becky went to pick out a headstone for her. I'm actually in the middle of making a TikTok. I'm not sure how it's gonna turn out because <laughs> I'm not very good at TikTok.
um, we just dropped off some trash and we are headed about two hours from here to my family to um, finally pick out a headstone for my mom's uh, grave. So Becky and her sisters and um, her mom's lifelong partner are across the street um, looking at headstones and I'm just feeling sort of emotional. And out of respect, I didn't obviously go over there. Um, yes, I'm part of the family, but I felt like it should be him and the three daughters. Um, I just, I just got done crying a little bit, and I am hurting for Becky so bad, and it's just, it's hard. And so, tell me, how come the guys who are against gay marriage are the guys who watch lesbian porn? and get turned on by it. After being called out by her viewers, she finally decided to address the situation type dill. But if you want to cancel me, because this is cancel culture, over something that has happened over a year ago within private lives, me and Becky's mother, we had our ups and our downs. You guys have no idea what happened on Norma's side and what happened on my side. You guys don't know. You guys don't deserve any sort of explanations because this is a personal thing that happened in the past. Norma and I had problems at one point, but it's not your guys' business. I don't have to apologize to you guys. Do you remember when Amber and Destiny were on their way to a child's grave site and Amber acted like this? Ain't nothing like a car vlog. So, um, one of Destiny's close friends lost her daughter, um, she was riding a four-wheeler and ran into a pole. Uh, she was four, right? No, she was four or three. Oh, wait, didn't you say seven? Yeah, she was seven. Seven, sorry. Yeah, she was really cute. <laughs> Black on black on black on black. Oh, of course you When would. did I become such a blackie? Don't say that. Wait, what do you mean? That doesn't sound good. It's like emo. How about when Amber compared life by Jen to foodie beauty? Thoughts on life by Jen passing. I... See... People are gonna say that I'm making this about me, but when I found out, I could not stop crying. Did I ever talk to her? Yes. We actually used to be friends until I was a stupid idiot and I was in Chantel's chat and I said how- Because someone was like saying how Chantel and Life by Jen like weighed the same and I was just like, oh no, Chantel weighs like less. I guess I shouldn't have said that, but um, I hurt Jen's feelings. Um, I'm not- Yeah, I'm, I'm in a really good mood right now. It's just like death like just hits different. And in the same live stream, she learns of Narc Alert's heart attack and has this to say. The narco work had a heart attack. Have some sympathy. <sighs> Sorry, I'm trying to find my sympathy bone. My sympathy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't care! Amber has also fat shamed a woman that she saw in a restaurant and thought it was appropriate to make this video for all of her followers to watch. We went into Texas Roadhouse today and when we went to go sit down there was this girl who, you know, to me looked like she was maybe like 50 pounds bigger than me. And she was also sitting at a table with her like chunky friend. I couldn't help but almost like judge this morbidly obese girl like i am sitting there almost like judging this girl like 
I was more so looking at her thinking I'm so sad for her. Like I'm sad that she's she's obese and I noticed how other people stared at her yet I never noticed how people stare at me. I really almost didn't even want to sit there because I felt like we were going to draw attention because it's two really big girls and I couldn't stop staring at her. Like all I could think about was like I'm so sad for her like why is she eating out? Like I almost wanted to grab her and just be like, eat healthy, lose weight. And I was almost mad at that girl for being there to make me feel these emotions. Or when she said Stevie Wonder isn't actually blind. I thoroughly believe that Stevie Wonder is not blind. <laughs> Look at this clip, okay? How does he see in a loud room with loud people, loud singing, loud band, loud audience, how does he know that the microphone is falling? Like you can't hear that. The microphone, I have been near microphones like that and you don't hear those falling. Especially imagine all the music and the drums, like cause there's, it, it's just like a crazy loud scene in this scene and I don't have it played because I don't know about copyright or whatever. Tell me how that's possible. It don't add up. Amber also seems to have a major problem with being alone, so much so, that she forces her exes to sleep in the same bed with her even after they break up. She forces them by guilt tripping them, but also convincing them it's okay, because it's the quote healthy way to break up. I love Crystal more than I have ever loved anybody in my whole life. Crystal and I are the bestest of friends you could ever imagine. We have a connection that I don't think we'd ever be able to find with anybody else. I was in this relationship thinking we'd be together forever because that's what we'd say. And something changed and there's nothing I could do about it. I would never keep someone in a relationship if they didn't feel it was right. That's not the type of person I am. Do you still share a bed? Is it hard? We do share a bed. I don't see any reason why Crystal needs to buy a new bed because if I do, and when I do, plan on moving, they'd have an extra bed. There's no reason for it. I don't want them to waste the money. Friends sleep together all the time. We aren't close in the bed. We kind of just sleep. We are both actually talking to people right now. She's talking to a couple people. I'm talking to just one person that I have formed a really deep connection with. Me and Destiny connect and we have such chemistry with each other. It's freaking amazing. Then they broke up. Destiny saved me from a dark, dark place. We do still live together. Um, we don't want to lose each other in the sense of like being friends and stuff. And we're even still sharing the same bed. I know a lot of you are going to be like, what? It's very much an attachment thing. I feel like I'm honestly not going to be able to sleep alone. Becky is the next victim. I don't know if you guys know this, but um, I have a girlfriend. This is her. They got engaged. I'm engaged. So that is an actual situation. I <clears throat> am shook to the core. Um, it was so <laughs> special and it was totally Becky, the way she asked me. Um, true love, I'll tell you that much. Like. Then they broke up. We're still sleeping in the same bed. Okay, the situation is. We haven't been. We've been sleeping in the living room because, like, being in the bed, that's an intimate place. But we have decided, since our bed's really big, we might start sleeping in there together as friends. You know, the bed is really big, so there is a big space in between us. You There's know, Twinkie. Touching. We can try it. And if it's weird, then we won't do it. We have another bed. Plus, it's just nice to sleep with... But you're getting someone. You're, getting you're delusional thinking it's healthy to keep sleeping together. I slept with Crystal for months after we broke up. I slept with Destiny for a couple weeks after we broke up. It didn't affect me. The only way it did affect me was in a positive way. I don't want to just lose my friend in that comfort. I don't like sleeping alone. Like it is what it is. She doesn't like being alone in the same room, but that is something like to sleep, but that is something you are gonna have to work on. Yeah. But not yet. No. What, you want me to work on it now? No. There we go, there's your answer.
Oh, you always sleep with your exes after breakup. Weird. I know I'm so weird, but it's not like I force them. So I guess they're weird too. And on that note, let's take a look back at how Amber really felt about Becky proposing to her. <sighs> I'm starting to get emotional. I'm going to get to spend the rest of my life saying that Becky is my wife. That's like super special to me you guys know that when i announced my engagement you guys saw that like i didn't seem as happy as like a normal like person would be and i kept trying to like tell you guys no that's not true like i am really happy like deep down in my gut i i wasn't happy like i should have been and like i come on live stream a lot and i try to like act happier than i really am sometimes and i think that's what i did with the whole like engagement thing is like i was trying really hard to be like yes i'm happy about this but i just felt I honestly didn't feel anything when she proposed and it's like it's so embarrassing but like i kind of like <laughs> this is so embarrassing of it here's tea you know how like when you're when someone proposes like you're supposed to like cry like i low-key like try to fake cry Ugh. i know that sounds so bad she has also dead named and accused her ex casey of essay my first like live-in relationship was with a girl named cassidy i feel very um strongly about this and I feel like it's okay for me to say her name because she's transgender now so she's not Cassidy no longer so I'm able to say her name because she's a once was person like Cassidy is no longer here anymore obviously memories are kind of like fade in here and there but I do remember us being on the sidewalk and I remember her dropping what was in her hands and she took me by the throat and she started yelling at me and then, you know, she let go, obviously. And, ugh, I don't even know how to share this, but I'm gonna have to. Um, okay, so Cassidy was very sexually strived. Like, is that even a thing? I don't know. She really thought I was attractive. She really was sexually attracted to me. And she would literally sit there and beg me. At first, it was like cute little begs. Like, oh, come on, baby. Whatever. But then, as time gradually went on, it became, you're gonna touch me whether you like it or not and i was like you can't force me and little did i know she can um, that's when she started punching me a lot she would she would aim for my belly um i don't think she ever actually hit me in the face her favorite spot was my stomach she would punch me really hard in my stomach she'd punch me like around right here a lot she'd punch me on my arms and she would continuously do it until I agreed to make love to her or have sex, whatever you want to consider it. Um, so not only was I being physically abused, but I was pretty much being like... Casey has denied these accusations and claimed Amber was actually the aggressor. So I was curious why she, you know, about this video. And I was like, what is it? Because I don't, I don't really care what she does in her life. Her life is hers. My life is mine. We've moved on. It's been six years. But my fiance told me that she's calling me an abuser. And her that got my blood boiling. Because that's not true. 100% not true. Everything in that video was such bull that I can't even, I can't even, I was, when we start da started dating, I should say, I was 15 years old, 15, when we met. She's two years older than me. The places she said about being hit, those were on me. Those were the exact places she hit me. I was the one being abused. I didn't do it, and I damn well did not remember. She then wrote a poem called Rain and Petals Eavesdrop, which is an acronym for what she accused him of. In this poem, she is admitting she used the wrong word when describing what he did to her. R-A-P-E, Rain and Petals Eavesdrop, I used the wrong word. Rain and Petals Eavesdrop, I used the wrong word. Rain and Petals Eavesdrop. I used the wrong word. And we will never forget the moment that she forgets she's live and starts to literally sing the poem she wrote about being essayed by him. Um. Rain and petals, these drop. Pa. Pa.
If you or anyone you know has been the victim of abuse, don't be afraid to connect with someone via the number below. Did I forget any of your top Amberlin worst moments? Let me know in the comments and I'll make a part 2.